this is the long <laughs> story, which I gave you as briefly as I could, uh, of what the Bible says in uh, chapters 2 and others of Genesis, that a group called the Elohim, which is a plural term, uh, literally meaning the lofty ones, translated God, uh, said to each other, let us, in the plural, let us fashion the Adam. Adam comes from Adama, which is earth, so Adam literally earthling. Let us fashion the earthling in our image and after our likeness. And this is essentially in one uh, biblical verse <coughs> what the Sumerian tales tell <coughs> in uh, quite, uh, <coughs> quite a number of uh, cre <coughs> creation texts. <coughs> and then after they achieved that and uh, everything seemed to be in order, the deluge came and destroyed everything. So after the deluge, then, and I, there are tales, by the way, Sumerian tales describing the deluge and its reasons and its, uh, what caused it and, uh, and, and, and why was one God angry and said, let mankind perish, etc., etc., but that's uh, <laughs> another, it's <needs> another evening. <laughs> so uh, after the uh, deluge, when the water subsided, uh, they had to restructure and recreate and restart everything uh, from the beginning. And uh, they could not do it anymore in, uh, uh, in the Edin, uh, today's uh, Mesopotamia or Iraq, because it was all covered with uh, millions, or now one should say billions, of, uh, of <laughs> tons of mud. Uh, and then nothing could be done there until uh, the earth would, <coughs> would take uh, uh, generations and generations to dry. <coughs> so they shifted uh, the whole project from where it was. If you recall, it was this way. All, everything was anchored on Mount Ararat, the twin peaks of Ararat, which stand out as, as a marker, <coughs> and laid out exactly the same idea of a landing corridor, <coughs> Uh, this way. Now they used uh, as one of the facilities uh, to, uh, to, to, to serve their purposes a great platform that they had built here and that survived the deluge right here. And again using this notion of uh, equidistance from uh, there to there to the spaceport which was here uh, and here, to uh, create the whole landing pattern, uh, they uh, chose a new mission control center, a new place for the Duran Key, right here. And uh, this place is known today as Jerusalem. So Jerusalem, uh, and I sometimes uh, either it, it seminars or when, when I took groups with me to tour these places, uh, I would say uh, to them, uh, why, why is Jerusalem sacred? I say, well, uh, it is sacred to, uh, to Muslims because the tale is that uh, Muhammad was taken from Mecca or Medina uh, one night <coughs> on a winged horse and brought to where to Jerusalem, and there he was taken aloft and visited heaven for one night. So that's. Uh, <coughs> but why was Muhammad taken to to Jerusalem? Why wasn't he lifted just from Mecca or Medina? Well, because that place was already known as a sacred place because the Christians believed that that's where Jesus. Uh, preached and was crucified, etc. So I said, so why was uh, Jesus uh, crucified in Jerusalem? Uh, he was born in, in Bethlehem. He came from Nazareth. Why, why Jerusalem? Well, because that's where the temple was. 
the Jewish temple, the Temple of Solomon. So why was the Temple of Solomon there? Well, <laughs> people don't know. Uh, so I tell them, well, it was there because the same Anunnaki who had uh, this pattern and had Nippur as the navel of the earth and mission control center before the deluge set up this layout and made Jerusalem mission control center after the deluge. And equidistant from it is the spaceport and uh, a, a twin peaks emulating the twin peaks of Ararat. Twin peaks are here in the Sinai Peninsula and twin peaks artificial ones because there were no mountains there. So they built two mountains known as the Giza pyramids. Now, things did not go so well after the reconstruction and the setting up of the uh, alternate uh, mission control center. <laughs> the Anunnaki, uh, uh, who, uh, according to the tales by Enki and others, uh, were engaged in, in almost constant wars on their planet, uh, had at the time a leader called Anu, <laughs> but uh, he was actually a usurper. He usurped the throne. And uh, uh, under the Sumerian sexagesimal six system, of six times 10, 60, etc. <laughs> he ranked as the top rank 60. <laughs> and uh, his successor was a son called Enlil, who was given the rank 50. But Enlil was not the firstborn son. Uh, it was Ea, or Enki, as previously known as Ea. Uh, Enki, <laughs> who was really the uh, rightful successor but he was demoted to rank 40, and so on. So there was a pantheon of 12, matching the 12 members of the solar system, and matching other uh, 12 without belaboring it, uh, 12 months of the year, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples of Jesus, and, and so on. So 12 was a celestial number. So the relationships were such that the conflict was almost uh, inevitable, especially since it had a lot to do of who was mothered by whom, who was the father, who was the mother, uh, if this one uh, <coughs> was also uh, the son of, uh, of uh, Anu and Antu, then he was this rank, but if this one was only the son of this one, but not this uh, queen, he had another rank, so the relationship was quite uh, con confused and convoluted and, and, and leading to, to conflict, which, which soon appeared on Earth. And one of the um, uh, events that uh, took place, not, not, not uh, uh, too many, uh, relatively too many years after the establishment of that uh, great pattern of landing pattern in Jerusalem and the space force, etc., and the, period, the two artificial mountains in Egypt, <coughs> was that uh, uh, wars broke out. And the first war that I named in my book, uh, uh, The Wars of Gods and Men, <coughs> uh, the Pyramid Wars, because there was a series of them, had to do with, with, with these facilities because in the Great Pyramid, one of the two especially, which is the only one that has an ascending passage and chambers, all the others have just a descending <coughs> passage. 